Today, we're talking Goku's Arrival, OG Dub versus Kai, and Fighters 2 versus Sparking Zero, all right here. That's Dotto. I feel I like you're lying, Nana. Why are we talking about <laughs> Fighters 2 versus Spark? You, you better make me say something ignorant, huh? I, I, I'm sorry, Dotto. Listen, man, I, I got to get people to click I knew and it, stay. Man. You know? I, just, I knew it, man. You're going to you're gonna get me to say some crazy I, stuff. I, I get so you. Let's, I get let's you. just come out of the gates and let, let's just let's say it right here right now. By the way, I'm, I'm Nano. I'm Tyler. I'm Nano. Um, that's Dotto. And, uh, Nanogenics? You know, this, is, this, is, this is key moments, Dotto. And speaking ooh, of key moments, ooh, a key ooh. moment for you, I know was when you got Dragon Ball Fighters, Dotto. That's got to be like a, a key moment for sure for, for Dotto Dwayne. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say on the graph of my life. I mean, I'm not, I, I wouldn't even say. I know for a fact that Fighters release and the graph of my life's enjoyability, definitely, it's a one-to-one. -one I mean, it's a spike. It's a spike. It's a spike. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a key moment for sure. So I, I've asked you this, so I definitely do know the question, but we haven't, I don't know if we've really got to talk about it, like, you know, in this sort of format. But if you could choose bandai to get arc system works to come back and make you a, a fighters two but at the cost of sparking zero would you do it absolutely 100 percent. and I, I wouldn't even i wouldn't i wouldn't even feel bad about it now it's it's not even close now i i get why you say that because i anytime that we anytime this discussion comes up and i there's no way you you can't not agree with this is to me, it's not even a question about what is the best made Dragon Ball game of all time. Anytime people want to throw out any other game, I'm like, you're just wrong because Fighters, I think objectively, is the best made Dragon Ball game of all time. Uh, yeah, being real, I think Fighters is one of the best made games of all time. So just in the Dragon Ball world, like, don't get me, I think out of all the anime franchises, and I don't even think this is a hot take, by the way, Dragon Ball has had the best games the most frequently. The only thing I think even competes is the storm run. And as we've seen, Nano, that storm run has come to a generational end. They, uh, uh, you know, I still enjoy, I, I enjoyed the game, but they ain't even trying, bro. They didn't even try. So, you know, things like Xenoverse, I think Xenoverse made a great impact. I think yes. the Budokai Tenkaichi games were great. The, yes. the, just the Budokai games, bro. Uh, but Fighters, I think is just on a whole nother level. The only thing that holds Fighters back, Nano, is simply its genre. It's it being a fighting game, I think stops most uh, Dragon Ball fans from really being able to say like, yeah, that's just the best game. Yeah, and and that I can sympathize with because Fighters <laughs> is six years old. I've been saying I'm gonna learn Fighters and get good at Fighters for six years now, and it's never happened because it is just like at its core an actual fighting game. So I will say I'm not with Dotto. I would I want Sparking Zero, so I I would not sacrifice. You know, Fighters 2 for Sparking Zero, because Sparking Zero is damn near a dream come true. The only thing that could be, be better for me, because I I was a Tenkaichi head, you know, who wasn't back then? But for me, I, I would choose this style of Budokai 1 through 3 in Infinite World over Tenkaichi. So if we got like a, te like a Tekken style Dragon Ball game, like a modern Tekken style Dragon Ball game, or just literally, you know, Budokai 4, because... Mm, mm. I, I'm not crazy in saying that Budokai plays more like a like a tech end fighter, right? Like because because uh, you have like the sort of the open plane where you can kind of like go. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's 3D. Yeah, so I would personally that would have been like that is the peak of possible continue con continuation for me of series. Like when people ask for RB3 and all of that, like RB3 would be like pretty low on my list. You know what I mean? Like I I liked one. I wasn't the biggest fan of two. Um, but like Budokai, like a Budokai 4, true Budokai 4, not Infinite World, that would be that. But the step beneath that would be Tink. I think we're getting a Tenkaichi 4. That's so crazy. Um, <laughs> it's it's insane. I'm I'm pretty excited for it. Again, it's just the Fighters 2 thing. I'm, I'm absolutely taking that trade every day of the week. But I'm, I'm still excited. Uh, and I'm very much... I just... My only worries with the game are just the fact that it's coming out in today's day and age, bro. Like... Uh, you know, there's a lot of shortcuts you can take making uh -huh. new characters. Like, uh -huh. like I think people, I would be shocked if people are not disappointed with Sparking Zero. I'd be shocked. I'm, yeah, I think I think that's another thing too. Like with, you know, there's so much to to peel back here, but I think one of the things for sure is that when we get Sparking Zero, we get it in our hands, and yeah, there will be all these characters. 
But when you get into a game like Fighters, all these characters function so differently, right? Like every character feels like its own person. But when we get in Sparking Zero, it's going to have the Tenkaichi effect where most of these characters are the exact same. The combos are the same. The ultimates look different, but do similar things. Because like when you're making 100, if it really comes out with 164 characters, when you're making 164 characters, even with the dev time they're saying, I mean, some of them are going to be repeats. Like it's going to be impossible for them not to just basically be, um, what do you call that when it, when a character is basically the same? Um, uh, I mean, Smash mirror, calls it, it Echo Fighter. Echo. Mirror Echo, they call it Echo Fighters yeah. in Smash. Yeah, so it'll so it'll it'll probably feel like a lot of echo fighters. And so like I think I think you're very right. I think people are gonna be semi disappointed because like we're not in the PS2 days anymore and we're not satisfied as easily. I feel like the world is not as easily satisfied as they were twenty years ago. You yeah, know? people <laughs> a lot of times people take out like um our old standards on like game designers today. I always think that's so funny. Like people are just like, Man, gaming used to be so fun. Nano just I I, I sorry to go off on this side topic, but if like if ATV Off Road Fury came out today, I'm not playing that shit. I played that shit for 20 hours back it, in the day, just driving against out. the invisible it, wall. It still comes out, so that's why I know that. Yeah, oh, there, <laughs> there's been a new one within within at least the last like two years. That, yeah, see, that's crazy. I don't care because I'm not driving an ATV around in a video game. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, like what was what was cool and good then is just like, you know, it's not really enough. You know, I think yeah, I, nowadays I saw. I saw a comment that sort of like relates to kind of what you just said is that like back in the PS2 era, we weren't at the technical level where the games were mirroring the level of realism of real life. So it was still kind of like, um, it still felt like a game, like an arcadey kind of game, right? Whereas nowadays yeah. there's the technology where you can play Death Stranding and you're literally mirroring what it would be like to walk with that level of weight, you know? And so like, obviously that can still be fun, but the realism is it's so real and now every game is getting so real and the engines are able to replicate all this realism that it's losing some of that thing that made games fun and kind of like you left the real world behind. And so I think like that's probably part of it, too, is that like things are getting so technical. And so like it's just changed our perception of games. And so yeah. I, it is going to be so interesting when we get Sparking Zero. And if it does feel because I think they said in an interview, it's going to feel like you're playing Budokai Tenkaichi it's gonna, 4. It's going to be really interesting because I think to to touch on what you're saying there and just talk about, like, this is a gaming thing in general, but, you know, I think one of the bigger issues with gaming today is people, like like you said, back in the day, it was about arcadey fun experiences and you'd play what you like and you'd maybe play it with your friends sometimes, but it wasn't really your personality. Your personality wasn't that you played that game, but that's why we see so many live service games is because everybody wants, like, games today are more about, like, oh, like, yeah, I play Dokkan, bro. Like I'm a Dokkan guy. Or I play uh I play um Xenoverse, so I keep up with all the updates and uh, stuff like that. Or like I play fighters, I keep up with that. And that's why battle pass is our thing, because it's just like we lock people in and then they are that player. They play that game. So I'm interested. It's do you think Sparking Zero is gonna do anything like that? Or is it gonna be purely like uh, Sparking Zero will have DLC. There's no way, right? There's no way it won't I, I think I th I DLC. think it'll have DLC for sure. I'd be more a interested in battle pass. In, like, I don't yeah, like, do you think they're gonna keep have anything like? I think I think the, more I, than that. I think the difficulty with the Dragon Ball and Battle Passes is that so it's. I mean, they're, they're cooked. So spe well, so speaking of Dokkan, uh, we've had one ever crossover with another IP, and it was One Piece. Um, besides <laughs> other like uh, Toriyama, like because we did something with Sandland, um, but it was One Piece, and that was eight years ago. I think nine on for the Japan version nine slash eight years ago and never again and so i think the thing is is that like dragon ball is held to such a high standard that i don't even know what you would do with a battle pass in, so in something like sparking zero because there's no way they're letting like luffy come over and be in sparking zero there's no, no way shot. there's no way they're letting you unlock like um goku and like luffy's outfit or like vegeta and all might's outfit or whatever like there's no way they're allowing basically those other ips i guess because to them they probably feel like they're like uh like Dragon Ball would almost be like promoting, you know, like, yeah, that's like, I mean, that's just such an anime game problem is every anime game wants to be, be like a live service, but they don't want to take the sacrifices that live service games do. Yes. You, and you'd think with, with Dragon Ball being in Fortnite, you know, where like, and, and there is customization to the characters as well, is that like, that couldn't be sort of the like gateway drug for 
um, Shueisha or whoever is the one that makes the you know the final decision. Bro, like, be, let us do stuff like that. Because did you play? Was it Battle of Z where you could be um, in Naruto's outfit? It was Battle yeah, of Z, Yeah, and right? it was. And Storm had go, go Naruto and Goku's outfit. That was the one I played more. Uh, was Naruto and Goku's outfit. But yeah, and I think the all like I could go on a rant for twenty hours, bro. I hate anime games and people that make them. I they can't get out of their own way because they're like, oh, we're gonna do this live service game where we expect you to give us your money on a weekly basis. You're going to be giving us your money. Oh yeah. What are you going to do for me? Um, if you get to the max reward of the battle pass, you can get Goku in this shirt uh, from episode five. I don't, I, that's not, that's not cool. That's not worth it. That's not worth it or cool, bro. And, and you're going to run out by the way, you can do that for maybe a month or two. And then you're cooked. Like my hero academia, the battle Royale game, they know that's a fun game, right? You enjoyed that game. I've been wanting to go back to that game, but yeah. I mean, I, I have too, but the reason that you can't, like most people can't get addicted to that is because the goddamn Battle Pass rewards were All Might in a t-shirt. Yeah, they're or, ass. Or uh, school uh, outfits. I they're, can't the, even, they're the school outfits. The too. school outfits. Or uh, what? what's the... What's the fire guy's name? The fire dad? I can't remember. It's like... In, oh, oh, Endeavor? It's like E. Endeavor. I was going to say Inflamio for some reason, but Endeavor, it's Endeavor in his dad outfit. Bro, what the fuck? Who cares? God, yeah. I hate anime games. God, Dude. I hate anime games so much. Yeah, Put them get, in a funny costume. Yeah, or, or or literally just use the IP that you have the rights to and like, let me play as, again, I'm, I just keep going back to this because it's really Chris's characters and like, you know, but let me play as freaking All Might in a Vegeta armor outfit. Do you know how much more I would go for a battle pass if I could be All Might in a Vegeta armor outfit? That would be so yes, much sure. cooler or you know what not oh, even better because they own the rights to it put fucking vegeta <laughs> in <laughs> my hero game <laughs> yeah they be struggling out there go because they don't want to fail bro they, they 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 don't know they think every ip should be holy and uh, by the way i i actually agree if you want to keep your ip just by the one that's fine, but you cannot do that and then also pull from the most limited roster of costumes possible yeah. and then and then think you're going to succeed. I, I don't even know how they can do that. That shit actually pisses me off, bro. It actually infuriates me when I, when I see a new anime game come out and I'm like, yeah, it's a fun game. It'll be dead. It's going to be dead in a couple months because the passage of time, nobody's playing for a t-shirt. Yeah, I'm not no. doing that. You can't, you can't just release, honestly, and the My Hero game was actually innovative in the fact that they let you choose the color like they let you pull for different colors of the outfits yes a dragon yeah. ball game nano the dragon never. ball game not even doing that not never. even doing that bro never. that is crazy god i hate the i hate those decisions whoever makes those decisions you gotta let go you gotta you gotta it's time to move on from the industry it's time to retire you're, you're cooked yeah and speaking speaking of cooking we cooked because guess what there's bonus content to what you're watching right now where you can become a key member here on youtube or you can save yourself a couple bucks because there's a bit of a youtube tax there you can go over to patreon.com slash key moments watch all of our bonus content like reactions to dragon ball z episodes my full breakdown reaction to jjk for those of you that have been wanting to watch it on youtube youtube has been a little stubborn <laughs> and trying to get that live so it's only available currently on patreon hopefully we can bring it eventually over here to the youtube uh side of things um, and also just bonus podcast episodes that we have not released to the public yet. Uh, and so you get early access to that. And when we're ahead, you get early access to those um, episodes. Like people are going to have access to this early before everyone publicly gets to watch. It just benefits of supporting us, allowing us to pair editor, allowing us to do cool things like redacted. I can't tell you just yet, but you'll hopefully see soon. Stuff like that. Become a key member. Click the link down below the description. If you're on YouTube, you can click join. And Dotto, we have some pretty let's, excellent bonus content. But there was another discussion mm -hmm, I mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning. Yeah, let's get let's get let's, to this next discussion. So I'm ready right now, it. right now on Twitter, and it's still somehow still going. I have not chimed in, by the way. I, I I've thought about doing it, and I was like, I'll save that, and we can chime in. I still might end up tweeting. But we can chime in via um, the podcast, and that is a lot of discussion around OG Dub versus Kai and how a lot of it really spawned by this one particular tweet that basically said like please watch if you're a new dragon ball head because it is crazy to think but there were probably a lot of people that got in dragon ball via super because uh, it's the more modern dragon ball series and then when you get into super you're like well let me see what is before and so you go to z and then you're presented with two options you can either watch dragon ball kai that's like 130 episodes or you can watch dragon ball z that's like 292 so obviously i think if i were a new gen i probably would want to watch kai 
because I'd be like, that's the way faster way to consume it. However, yeah. the OG heads, like I think me and you are, probably would be like, well, the dove, the OG dove, has this little thing called Faulkner's OST that definitely fits Ooh. all the moments infinitely better. Now, I'll shut up because I've talked enough. Um, Dotto, what is your stance on Dragon Ball Kai versus the original S dub of Dragon Ball Z? As much as I want to come in here and make this an entertaining podcast for everybody, you know, bounce off the walls like the gaming take, I, I really can't because with this, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a Dragon Ball centrist on this take, unfortunately. Uh, I do think that the Kai, Kai is overall the better product. It is, it, sh it probably is the go-to. It probably should be the gold standard. But in saying that, you are missing out on some, some heat. Not even just the OST, because the Falconer OST... Again, I mean, me and Nano have talked on this one enough, but it's so good. It's it's very action. It's very... The, basically, the OG dub, I would just say, is a lot more of an American product. It's more American. Uh, it has, like, the actor... The acting is a little bit worse. That's something you get in Kai. It's better acting. But it's more like they could play with it a little more. Um, one specific thing, and then I think maybe... I actually, I'm going to... Let's take a little break. I want to bounce it back and forth now because I, I need to know your specific take. Um, Majin Vegeta has a lot of lines that are effective. Uh, and I would say in the OG dub, Majin Vegeta was really a lot cooler than, than Kai. Uh, I think they messed up his lines. Do you know what I'm talking about here? Like the Kai so dub comparison? I, I, know, I do know that one specifically. I, can, I, can I put myself on blast? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I've no never shot. watched Kai. Oh, Wow, this guy is old now, as fuck. This guy's an old head, dude. Now, when I now when I say that, I've seen Kai because like I I tuned in because I thought it was so cool that Dragon Ball was back on uh, TV, and so I remember like watching uh, Kai on on Nick and stuff like that. But um, I've still seen stuff. But it's pretty much impossible to be in this space and not see like comparison footage and not see. Um, I don't know, just different clips. And obviously I've searched up clips to watch Kai because one of the things I, I found out that um, this was ages ago, but one thing I found out was that the Boo Saga of Kai uses uh, Super OST. The the guy that did Super, did uh, Boo Saga stuff. I don't know if you realized that or I surely did. But I, I didn't, I don't know if I did. Yeah, so during so and I think they had some production problems with the Boo, the Boo arc. But yeah, just putting myself on, on a little bit of blast, which might invalidate my... To some of you, my opinion, I don't really care. Uh, but Ooh, who, I mean, I don't, don't care. I don't. I, you don't I have, get it. Out. Yeah, <laughs> I have seen. I have seen the Majin Vegeta stuff though, because that is probably one of my favorite portions. And uh, they, although, to, let me take it one step back to to chime in. By the way, on why Kai is obviously better. Not to mention sticking to Kai is better for um, that that section, uh, and also the voice actors just obviously having many more years under their belt and many more years with these characters specifically. So being able to come back and like portray these characters with more experience means you probably are just gonna be better at your job, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing is though, by the time they were doing the MV stuff, I mean, they had dubbed a lot of episodes, which is why I think like Chris was able to cook with Mods and Vegeta. And uh, yes, just to finally, to long winded way of saying, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, the Majin Vegeta stuff hits way more in the original dub specifically than uh, in in the Kai scenes that I have seen. And again, it also throws me off because like, I know you said Faulkner like score aside, but a lot of the scenes, Vegeta specifically, a lot of those scenes just don't hit the same for me without his music. He has so much tailor-made music for him. Yeah, it's a lot more action-y. It's always going to be more at rock and roll, I think, in the OG. Yeah, that just doesn't hit the same without that. For for me. For me. Because again, this is like this is all just our opinions, but for me, it just does not hit the same without the Hell's Bells and like the you know, just all of that. that it's that so good. Chimes man. in. So yeah, the Majin Vegeta stuff specifically is something that I hold such near and dear to, to like my heart, like those moments specifically. Uh, I yeah, that that those alone are worth watching the dub, you know, over I, watching I get, Kai for me. Yeah, I get the 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 big. I mean, you can really go with either one. Kai is going to be more accurate if you if you if you've watched Super. I think those depictions of the characters they will still be a little, probably vastly different from the Super characters to just the Z era. But they will be closer in performance for sure. 
Uh, everybody was kind of feeling it out, I think, during the OG uh, run. But again, there are some lines like the Majin Vegeta stuff. I just think is it sounds cooler. It's better. The music makes it feel more. Uh, I, I always say rock and roll, but it makes it feel more like badass. Uh, and they, they mostly just like there's a huge nostalgic factor. And uh, yeah, just some of the lines they were able to get away with, uh, like do. I don't know. They hit. They hit. Basically, there's some there's some gold to go back for and look if you want to. Um, but yeah, if somebody's brand new getting into it, I would probably tell them to watch Kai. But if they were like, uh, you know, I, I'm down for a bit of a longer experience. Actually, I say, I saw you had to say, bro. Go I, back. I think, I think here's the thing too, and and this is, I don't know. I just, I just, I, I don't care. Like, again, we can all have our opinion, so it's fine. But for me, the reason why I've never watched Kai and finished it, I've watched. Sorry, let me also take a second. I have tried watching Kai, but music and stuff. And Toasty realized this pretty quickly. Music can carry something mid for me. Yeah, you're you're a pretty big music I, guy. I'm, I, yeah, I'm really, and I, I shouldn't follow this up with this, uh, but like for attack, like for example, Attack on Titan, which I don't think Attack on Titan is mid in any way. But my one, part of the reason why I'm so attached to Attack on Titan is because it has one of the most godlike scores of anything ever. Like <laughs> the the score of, of AOT is absolutely insane. So it'll be hard for that ser series to ever be beaten um, for me, just because of how good the score is. So when I'm watching Kai and I, we've got these like old school 80s sounding OSTs to anime, it just like, it just doesn't, it doesn't hit. And, and I can appreciate the better voice acting. I can appreciate the better pacing, but I'll be damned if like when those moments are happening and it's just like this whimsical ass music. And, and I know so many people are like, how dare you Nano? But it just does not <laughs> hit for me. No. For me, I, I, I agree, bro. The music again, music is not as big of a deal for me, but I guess the best way to say it for me, maybe if there's people out here that are more like, like me and not just the music, but it's the, the tone. Once you start, I've never been a fan of trying to mesh the show more. And this is a crazy, I know this is kind of a crazy take. I've never been a fan of trying to mesh what Americans had with Dragon Ball Z with what Dragon Ball Z actually was. Because I'll be honest, American Dragon Ball Z, I like it a ton more because it just feels more bad. At, like, again, the conversation gets more interesting. I get more passionate about it when you tell me that, like, if you think Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, when he first transforms, should have the beautiful angelic vocals, I will always disagree with that because that shit is lame to me, bro. I got to be honest, yeah, bro. Dude, it's so when, fucking lame, when, bro. It's so lame. It is tweet, so lame. When people tweet, they're like, this shit hits. And, yeah, I, and I, I'm expecting, this shit. I'm expecting yeah. Falter and I click on it and it's that. And I'm like, bro, I, I know that. And I always use that moment because I know it pisses the most people off because it's to some people. It's this beautiful quiet moment yeah but to me bro fuck that i i want to i don't want I, I will watch the anymore and bro that is what i want to see not so far in the arms of an angel bro shit, if you don't shut the fuck if you don't get that fucking baby bird off the screen right fuck now that shit is about lame as hell man turn the goddamn soundtrack up bro, bro i know dragon ball yo. fans look I get it. You you like it, and that's fine. But that shit, not for me, bro. I want to hear. I will watch it anymore. Boom. Dude. Dude, fucking soundtrack kicks in. I want. I want cell shitting bricks. Gohan is him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, bro. I don't. I'm. So that's that's my take. Is I just like when Dragon Ball Z is more badass. More Goku's a superhero, and I think. I I again. I like there there is some benefits you know I like the like the wacky tunes sometimes you yeah, know? yeah yeah I, I don't hate on it all the time but yeah in the moment it's not an all the time thing but in this yeah it's it, the one I use the one the one we've talked about plenty on this podcast is like the Ginyu transformation theme which is still crazy that he got that theme that used used so much late like <laughs> after that but like that theme specifically when that hits as Cell is getting disintegrated like that scene and I've again I've obviously watched it. Matter of fact, in Kakarot, Kakarot reuses a lot of the original, right? And so, uh, 
it just does not like it's just not it's not the same so when i click on those videos on twitter and i'm like they're like this hits and i'm like does it though <laughs> does it because i don't know if i would even be that big of a dragon ball fan right now if that is how i experience like i'm glad <laughs> people are like the americans meddled with our cre with the original creation this is the, you don't you don't actually like real dragon ball and i'm like well i may no, not I'm, have, I'm not be here right now if we wouldn't have had the americanized good, version i know i bro i mean we could do a whole very infuriating podcast for a lot <laughs> lot of people if we only talked about that because they don't want to hear my opinion on that bro because people always go why the americans change this why'd they do that and every time they name that i'm like bro kid me would have fucking hated the show if that shit wasn't included man <laughs> bro like they were like uh why the americans change that i'm like bro because that shit is hard like i it sounds childish but that shit is sick that goes crazy yes it's like that's all i gotta say bro <laughs> it's just like my whole thing is like Whatever they change, the people that made those decisions clutch the fuck up. They knew what they were doing, I, and uh, I, I agree. Yeah, that's it. I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, but so yeah, I just to like wrap this up from my side, my angle of it is that from what I've seen of Kai, I definitely will say that is the better way to experience Dragon Ball. I mean, you and I literally on the reaction because today we are talking about episode twenty eight of Dragon Ball Z, Goku's arrival. And you and I both agree, like, the, the when the filler hits, it is very, especially right now specifically, it's very, uh, is egregious the right way to say it? Would that be like... A it can be, I mean, egregious, yeah, it can be pretty fucking egregious. Yeah, so, like, if we were watching Kai, none of that would be happening. Matter of fact, if we were watching Kai, 28 episodes in, into Kai, we're, like, we're on Namek. We're on Namek. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the pacing is better, the voice acting is better, uh, and, you know... If you are a purist and you want to experience it the way that, you know, they originally created it in Japan, then Kai is obviously the better way to go uh, because you're going to get the the Japanese OST and stuff like that as well. However, the one thing, and as I've already mentioned, as someone that is so attached to different OSTs and stuff, it, it just all is so much better for me when those moments that do hit in the original dub, they hit so much harder because of the OST. So... Uh, you know, I think if you're a new, if you're new to it, and especially you're more accustomed to the pacing of more modern anime, yeah. that's not my hero. Um, I don't know why I'm making the, my hero catch strays. I did just catch up on my hero though, so like, it, yeah, I, it's just, fair. Uh, you're just in it's the uh, trash talk on my hero mood. Also, last thing I'll say on this is there are not to be. We talked about dragon boxes in the bonus video, which you can see over on Patreon. But uh, there are different ways to watch old Dragon Ball Z. If you do like the vintage look. You can get things like dragon boxes or even the level sets uh, like the OG. There, there's so many different home releases of Dragon Ball that you can see it in wildly different aspect ratios and like quality. So there are different elements of that. So Isn't if you it do want to see how many different ways Z is like obtainable. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. So overall, Kai is easier because it's just in HD. If you see a Blu-ray for Kai and you buy that, you're going to be watching Kai. So that's also another benefit. But I ain't gonna lie, as somebody that likes like the vintage aesthetic of especially like the Saiyan saga, the level sets hit different. The level sets are probably the best thing ever of all time. And they got canceled. So shout out to that. But damn, the level sets are so good. <laughs> oh man. But um the level sets, I would definitely recommend checking those out. Uh or the dragon boxes if you got money like that. Like if you're an oil baron watching this, um, first of all, the Patreon, I can't plug that enough to you. Uh, but <laughs> definitely, definitely the dragon boxes after that. Yo, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I forgot about this, but if on YouTube, I'm not sure if we've activated this yet, but I think you can just gift memberships. I don't know how that would work, but I really do believe you can give memberships. Oh, bro. Fun bro thing really too, hoping that oil barons here. Yeah. 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 Fun, fun thing as well. If you are a YouTube premium member, which I, I love I, YouTube premium. I, yeah, me too. I don't even have to worry about uh, ad block. And I did it more so because I listen to a lot of podcasts and like I want to be able to lock my phone. When they changed it where you couldn't lock your phone while you're listening to YouTube like stuff for music and all that, I was like, yep, all right, premium. I got to get premium. <laughs> uh, I forgot they did that. That was pretty scummy. But yeah, yeah, that was really scummy. But it's been so many years that I'm just accustomed to it now. I will say you can be a member for free for like a month. I, I saw it the other day when I clicked on our channel. It said you can be what? free. Yeah. So if you've been a YouTube premium member for three months, um you can then become a member of a channel any channel you have to even you don't have to do it on us would love you if you did but um you can do it on, I, on any channel for like free for a month i was like oh bro just told me i wasted my money i recently became a member of some other channel oh just because i like their content yeah 
Uh, and I was like, and I paid for it. So now, <laughs> now I gotta go get my freebie. Yeah. So as long as long as you, uh, it said it came up and said the requirements that like you had to be a premium member for three months, and then you can get a free membership. Anyways, uh, yeah. So basically, we they have their differences, but I I am gonna be a, I'm I'm forever gonna be an OG dub guy, but I can respect anyone that wants to watch Kai. Uh, I just I think what I think is so funny besides the the besides the Majin Vegeta stuff and uh and then other things i like a little bit more about the dub i think most people just like the dub because of the ost am i wrong i feel like most people when they're arguing for the original dub they're just arguing literally for the ost Mostly. yeah or the Mostly. or the or the more badass moments yeah yes yeah because there there are some there are some lines that just go crazy yeah, like yeah, yeah people that a lot of purists hate but like yes they do go crazy yes. i don't even care <laughs> oh the last thing i want to say i will say i want to say one more thing do you really Ooh. do you really believe though that like if you like, like what we're doing right now we're watching the original like dub for this do you really believe that by the time we're done the the differences and which we cover those here on the pod but the differences and all of that is really affecting us that much as we continue to watch dragon ball do you think it has really affected the way we see these characters like truly that much because that's what people will say that it's like it changes the entire <laughs> perspective of characters do you believe that actually uh, no, I think they're, I mean, the, the main beats are all there. I, I, like, what, like how would people even mean that? I, I guess I disagree so much that I'm not even sure what they mean by that. Like, do I think the characters would like, be like, like are, are, are they're like totally mischaracterized because of the, in, of, of certain lines. Oh, absolutely. But that, but Nano, now, now you got me worked up again, Nano, because now I understand where this, where this is coming from. This is coming from people talking about. The character, the versions of the characters that I like, because I actually agree. I think they are going to be different, a little different in Super. Not necessarily Kai. I think the Dragon Ball Z tone is usually always there, but Goku is more like heroic in the OG Z dub. He's more like yeah, they, they play like, him more as like a superhero almost. Is he's he's mean? more superhero. He's not like cartoonishly like I'm gonna save the world. Like he'll like like in the episode we watched today, he's like I don't really need your help. Go on, but. But I will agree, but I think that's better. I don't think it's worse. Like, I think they're, they're, because every time people make these arguments, these are the same people that go on to say, like, why is Goku more of a superhero now? It's because, bro, you're basically saying that, like, the version of the character is, it's just not consistent. The, the more consistent one, I think, would be the one we're seeing in the dub. But in Dragon Ball Z, I don't even think it's that different. Where it gets into super, that's, if you watch the OG Z dub, like all the way through and then go into super, I think you'd be like, why is Goku like actually negative 75 IQ? Like what is happening? Why does this, like, but that's all stuff that Americans would have cut out. You think, no, no, tell me right now. In the English stuff for Dragon Ball Super, because they want to be one-to-one -one with the Japanese show, Goku's like, what's kissing? What's that? In America, that's cut. That's getting cut, bro. That is not, they're, they're rewriting the lines. Goku's not going to be that stupid. No shot. I don't believe that. Goku was like, I don't know. I I don't know. Goku was more of like a troll, I guess. Like he yeah. he had his fun, but he wasn't like actually dumb. Well, Not that dumb anyway. So I I we'll we we'll get off the I, one last thing. I linked you an example of basically kind of what I think they meant or at the about the original dub, but this is actually specifically super. If you click on that link, uh it's basically a link of it's Vegeta and and Balma discussing something in super and <clears throat> Vegeta in the in the sub in the actual original Japanese says let's go let's go join them and have a good time uh and then Bulma says that and then Vegeta says mind your own business and in the dub <laughs> Yamcha catches strays from Vegeta and like I'm like it didn't it didn't even change that much like it it actually <laughs> It, it it didn't even change that much. I actually think it was funnier the delivery of it's it. It's funny, yeah. I, the delivery of I, of him like mentioning like Yamcha being there instead of it just saying mind your own business is actually way funnier to me. It didn't change anything for me about like if anything I like what they did more with with letting Yamcha catch strays. So yeah, it's way it's more it's more fun. I, yes. I like when the show is more fun and also like I think that's a better like. If you told me to grade the lines, I think that is a better line for Vegeta. Mm -hmm. Like if I had to pick one to go in the show, I would pick that one. Yes. So that that's mostly my thing is just because the just because that's what it was in the Japanese show does not mean that that is better. I, I feel like you can make 
or they should be allowed to make changes if they feel and again they they <laughs> what's crazy is i would usually argue that they don't make these kind of changes not enough for me i it you know if if the english writers got the script and they just got to make their own script i think i would end up liking the show more just to be completely honest because the what and hang out with yamcha line i think that's so much more fun yes. i think it brings in more of the cast uh and it makes Vegeta like that. Yeah, like that. Vegeta's just have, like saying some shit, bro. Like, I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot more. I, someone said uh, Yamcha's living rent free in Vegeta's head, which I think is kind of funny because we've been talking about this so much lately of like poor, poor Yamcha, bro, because like Vegeta ended up like scooping her up and then has like two babies with her and shit. Like, <laughs> so it's kind of funny that. I don't know. Like the call to Yamcha is is pretty is pretty dope, actually. Uh, it's just it's fun, man. It's it's fun because it's, a good, it's you good. would you would say that shit. Like if you are still in a friend group and you're now married to someone that someone was previously dating in in said friend group, like you would make that line. That's probably some shit I would say. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> also, let's be let's be real here. We want to talk about just something being fun, something being cool. This uh, this tweet. The one calling out the line, then people are basically having fun with it. 18,000 likes. And then it got quote tweeted with 52 more thousand likes. People like this stuff. It's yes. fun. Yes. It's fun. I, yeah, 100%. You know what else is fun, though, Dotto? Uh, talk about episodes? Goku arriving Ooh. finally Ooh. after 20 plus episodes since his death against Raditz. Because we're it talking. It almost took us longer to get here in the episode. It, it's. Uh, almost. Uh, we are talking about uh, um, episode 28 of Dragon Ball Z, the uncut series, or more specifically, the 22nd episode of the Vegeta Saga in the uncut Dragon Ball series. It originally aired in Japan on the 29th of November in 1989. Uh, and then it has the original American air date, which again, the difference here is the fact that we are watching when Funimation did it versus the original run was the like... Um, it was before Funimation essentially took over, which is why like Falconer uh, OST is actually not present as much in here as, as it will be once we get into the Namek Saga side of things. It was August 1st of 2005. Uh, Dado, fun fact, by the way, I was watching, I meant to send you this and I never, I don't think I ever sent it. I pulled up, have you ever been suggested one of those Toonami, like 24 hours of Toonami and like it's just 24 on hours. On YouTube, yeah. Yes. So I clicked on one and it had some Dragon Ball Z because of course back in the day, there's no way you're getting 24 hours of Toonami without, without some Z. And the uh, intro title card was sick. It was completely different. It, matter of fact, it was one of the, it was the Cyberman episode we had just watched at the time. And which is just a few episodes back from our, our rewatch. By the way, we we rewatched Dragon Ball Z. You're now in the portion of the episode where we're talking about the rewatch <laughs> of Dragon Ball Z again. Uh, and it was completely different. And it had it was the ocean dub. It was the ocean dub. It was uh, the character sounded so like sounded way different, and the title card was way different, and the music was way different. But like the title mm. card was sick. It was really really cool. Um, they had, like, I need to see that. I I'm honestly ocean dub is my biggest blind spot. I I did not. Yeah. watch most of those intentionally like I've so, never... well, I, I think i think most people did right because this was yeah. back when it repeated this is back when we hadn't gotten namek yet and i believe that's i believe funimation took over and that's how we got past that and we got actually into like the frieza stuff of the series but anyways that that's why this says august 1st of 05 because they had to go back and redo these so you had like a complete funimation with the, all the same voices and all the same like you know stuff like that Anyways, this is Goku's arrival. He is finally here. This episode, while he does arrive, I will say it had some iconic lines and it definitely had some important moments, but there was a surprising amount of filler in this. Yeah, they took their they, they took their goddamn time. This is a good one to talk about Kai as much because this, this shit is, what, maybe 25% of the episode in Kai? Yeah, nice. because there's the there's the face zoom ins, there's the cutaway to Kami House multiple times because they they're so stuck that, on making sure these characters can be involved and see what we want to talk about. Agree, we want to talk about egregious. That that one's the egregious one. I actually like when they do the face zoom ins because sometimes they lead to cool looking oh, shots. Oh, I, I like that too. I don't I don't mind that, but it's just like it, it. You could tell. I think they were trying to fill for time to hit their twenty minutes. You know, like. It's yeah, like, they were struggling. It's like back in the day when you wanted every YouTube video to be 10 minutes long and you're just like, uh, yeah, so today, guys, you know, I, I did, I got stuck in traffic. I was trying to make this, you know what I mean? Like you, you got to feel for time. Like, and that, I kind of feel like that's what you could, you could notice that here. And maybe it's just because he was finally here and I expected this episode to be like a little more, a little more poppy. 
you know um uh -huh. and, and i think they were still just buying more time to get the full runtime that they wanted because they're saving the the goods for uh the next episode of the episode after that but hey anyway. hopefully that means we're in good we're in for a good time next week that, that's all i'm hoping for is is that we speed this up you know maybe we're saving time for the this future was, this was by the way this was a good episode i want i do want to say it wasn't this. bad wasn't bad this wasn't was a bad. good episode it was just like it's, i mean we it, the thing is i think what happened to us nano is that they started throwing in the filler after they came out of the gate swinging. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they start the episode. I, I made a joke in our watch through. They start it with Piccolo Sacrifice. And when I say start, I mean, like, they do the little intro. They do their, uh, like, the recap. And then, boom, Piccolo is like, go on, get that. And he gets shot, bro. Like, instantaneously. Uh -huh. Instantaneously. Uh, and that takes up pretty much the first three minutes of the show right there. Uh, and I gotta say, it looks it looks pretty good. I think this is a burned in moment, though. Not too much to say. I think everybody remembers it. Yeah. Uh, but it looks really good. They they definitely start they started with a bang. They did. And uh, I think I, just to like recap this episode for everyone, so we're all caught up. This is this is obviously when Goku arrives. We started being a little no afraid shot. because no, they no shot. They do they do show him on Nimbus in there as well. Um, and then of course again the. Uh, the whole cutaway to the uh, Kami's lookout. And of course, Kami is fading because Kami and Piccolo are tied. So we, we know we have a little bit of interaction between Kami and, and Popo and Kami saying like, hey, guess what? Dragon Ball's on Namek. You guys have to go because these are about to be destroyed because me and Piccolo are dying. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kami lore dumps, bro. That was crazy. Yeah, that, that was a lot. Just like boom, boom, boom. And then, so, you know, Piccolo, Piccolo dying. And so it really did feel like we weren't going to see Goku until the end of the episode. But then, of course... You know, Vegeta's or Vegeta. <clears throat> Actually, there is a, a substantial amount of Vegeta in this episode too. But Nappa is basically gonna come over and, and crush Gohan. Goku arrives and actually does save him before the mid well, the midway cut. Hold on, bro, because I got beef with you. Hold on. And also, I really quick, I do want to touch on <laughs> Kami disappeared, and then like after we went through a whole Piccolo speech, he reappeared to disappear again. Yeah. That was so Nano Nan was eating. Kami haters were eating this episode. We got to watch him die twice. Uh, but. Nano, a long time ago on this podcast, I brought up that I thought the Masenko was a cool beam and one that I tried to do in real life as a kid. And we finally got the Masenko scene. Out of anger, we get a go on rage boost. Yes. I forgot this is where they stuck this in. Which which what which was sick, by the way. Yeah, because you There we go. Last, there we go. Last week I think you were expecting it to happen in last week's episode and then it didn't. And I remember you're pretty disappointed about that. I was I was really confused. I was like, when does this guy fire a Masenko? I know he does. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you you finally sorry I was kind of speeding through because I thought we could go back and like, but my bad I did oh, I did miss out. You wanna, I did miss out uh, on a on a on a pretty important note. Anyway, so I then, wasn't familiar. I wasn't familiar with your game. Yeah, sorry. I was just like trying to recap it so everyone's on the same page, and then we could dive back in deeper. Okay, into, like, go go. Yeah, 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 go, yeah. Uh, so Goku's there. Goku then looks around. Nappa's like, yeah, all your friends are dead. And then guess what? You can't see Chiaotzu's body because he blew up. And then after <laughs> that. We get a sense childish. We, we get a sense to being a Krillin, which Krillin's like, I don't know, man. Maybe you shouldn't give that to me. I don't know how useful I am. And then he gives it to him, and then he's like, then Krillin's like, all right, the three of us can do it. And then Goku's like, nah, I got this. And it's like, wait, so yeah. why'd you give him that? The the clickbait was crazy. He did say, No, Krillin, it's your help I might need. Krillin eats it, stands up, and then he's like, All right, let's do this. He's like, bro, get the fuck out of here. I don't need your help. <laughs> That, that 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 was crazy. That that was just unnecessary. But continue. Then uh, there is definitely some Kami House stuff, and uh, Baba arrives so they can see this. But we don't need. We don't really need to talk about that. Then then <laughs> then there's the uh, what nine thousand? Except he actually didn't say what nine thousand. So I wonder where that's from. I don't know. I don't know where the what's the power? Le what's the scatter say about his power level, Vegeta? It's over nine thousand. What? I'm actually 9, maybe that's ocean dub. I, I think no, I think he did say that. Uh, he says what nine thousand? That can't be right. Oh, it's just I guess not. I, I guess it's I not as played it. up as. I think you remember the YouTube poops, man. Like is that, is that what it is? They, Damn. Well, they because the YouTube poops would edit like they would like repeat stuff and make them go on maybe, for longer. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. And then <laughs> uh, Nappa and Vegeta, Nappa and Vegeta, Nappa and Goku fight for a minute, and then that's. We get a good a good old punch on Nappa, and that's pretty much the end of the episode. So let's uh let's take our let's take our step back here. <laughs> let's take our step back. So that's, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Like that's basically that is the episode. Um, yeah, <laughs> bro, read the script. <laughs> so as we 
as we take a step back, by the way, this is interesting. I'm going to shout out to the wiki. So the thing that he fires to essentially kill Piccolo is his bomber DX. Did you know that? I didn't realize that. Uh, I no, I don't think I put that two and two together. I, there. I, I had not. So that's actually, oh, so, oh, Nappa in uses fight, in fighters. That's just his key blast. Yeah. 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 So nap. So this is the same, or it's a variation of this attack is what he used to destroy that big thing. When we were on Arlia, like 20 episodes ago. Oh, ah, this was the foreshadowing all along. Yeah. Yeah. So when he kills the big thing that they were hyping up when they're on Arlia and then it's like just nothing for the two of them that he did basically that same bomber DX move on, on Yeti, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and then he, this is also when he used this against Krillin um, after Krillin hit him in the face with that Destructo disc. And, uh, yeah, Krillin dodged that. So, yes. Yeah. yeah we, we ain't got to worry about that's, all that. That's actually that's pretty cool, though. I, I didn't realize that. Was, I mean, again, as two guys that play the games all the time, like I, sometimes I just don't be putting two and two together. You know what I mean? Like, I did, Yeah. For, for a lot of the Saiyan Saga characters, I'm not even going to lie. Like they just any move they use in the game. I just like pretend like I'm like, oh, yeah. OK. Like that's something they would probably do. The bah. as you mentioned, like again, most of us know what it looks like when Piccolo is getting killed. But like the effects here are really cool. Like I love what they chose to do at this moment, making it basically black and white because of the beam. Um, it looks yeah, so they good. went crazy. The they effects so got good. animated really well. Yeah. Uh any anywho, after that, that's <laughs> that is when we that is when we do get the. Uh, the fade away to Kami and Kami tells us all about Namek because we're setting up foreshadowing for the next arc here of having to go get the Namekian Dragon Balls, which I wasn't even wasn't even foreshadowing, bro. Just spoiled I mean, it, the fight. Yeah, he, I, like I think I don't even remember. Like I, I, I really don't think that line was necessary. They could have cut that. And let somebody else say that, or just because I think later on in the show, without even Mister Popo telling them that, they realized that idea themselves, right? Yes. Like, I think Gohan thinks of it or something. Well, so I don't I feel like we've already been we've already talked about this, right? Have we not talked about there being no, Dragon because Balls dynamic? That's what that's what I'm saying is Vegeta talks about like he says there's probably Dragon Balls over on Namek, so we can go do that's, that. That's that yes, it was Vegeta. So Vegeta says that and then I think later King on, shit, you, you know, know, when the when the arc plays it, he's he put two and two together real fast. I will give him that. Later on, Gohan's like, no, we gotta like we can go to Namek and do that. Or somebody says it because they heard Vegeta say it. So why the fuck they, they felt the need to make Kami say anything? I mean, I guess they had to give him some lines. He's on the verge of being written out of the story. Uh, you know, but just needless exposition there. Wasted some time. Uh, anything to fill that 30-minute time slot, though? Yeah. And then, and then so, but an interesting thing we talked about, and, and he never did fade away, is Kami fades away, obviously, because they're, you know, they're tied, they're tied together. But Piccolo's body never fades away. I think that's just because he got shot. Like, I think whoever physically dies gets their body to be, you can stay, but you're like crispy. But whoever, whoever's on the receiving, you know, kind of make, think about it. It makes sense. Like if our lives were tied together, Nano, and you got shot and died, oh. like what, what would happen to me? I'd probably fade away, but you died by getting shot. Okay. I mean, another thing that could make sense is if I just like died physically, but you know, I, 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 fading away it would make sense it, it'd go a little easier okay 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 speaking of speaking of like guns and 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 stuff i'm like in the thick of gun devil stuff right now on chainsaw man i'm like episode 10 uh, of season one and this this mm -hmm. shit is getting mm -hmm. real good i'm like i gotta, I gotta <laughs> finish i gotta finish that series tonight bro i got three episodes and i'm i'm caught up on season on season one anyway uh and people fading away because that that did just happen in that show and i was very sad but uh mm -hmm. all right so now so comics faded away piccolo's dead and this is where you get your moment this is like you get your moment again there was the there was the cutaway. There, there was the cutaway i think Some, somewhere in here there is a cutaway to Kami house and chi chi speaking of guns has a has a freaking like machine gun over there a thompson is what it kind of looked like yeah, um, i don't know what the all that filler stuff i don't know what chi chi thought she was doing with that but they were they, they kept me waiting for my Masanko beam. I actually think overall, after watching all this Saiyan Saga stuff back, uh, I feel like Gohan could have gotten more moments. I feel like all the training we watched with Gohan didn't really pay off all that much. Yeah, you're kind of right. Like I, I would have, I would have liked more of a, a true back and forth because he was him there for a bit. 
after that training arc, right? It was so crazy. He, we, we, did, we, we did the dry, we did the, 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 not the dragon thing, the thing with the, the dinosaurs. And he was so just like him. And then he's all, he's back to being a baby again. It was so w w weird. Like the, yeah, the dinosaur stuff, he was him. Then Piccolo's training came around. And then he went back to being a baby. And see, then against Nappa, he was kind of more scared. Dotto, the, the guys who, the guys who are like, see if you guys would watch Kai, you're you're getting you're misjudging the character because of the, <laughs> that, uh, the that, No, it, it it is actually true though, and I did mention that. I was like, well, now that the filler's over, Gohan has to go back to being scared. Yeah. So all progress has been rewritten. Yeah. Yeah. Which okay, but to be fair, I guess in the in the maybe the moment to moment, you know, maybe maybe the the OG dub might set you up a little bit, but by the time you're done with episode like 292. You're ready to go on a super. Yeah, you know these characters. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll understand. You'll yeah, understand. You're, you're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, but this Masinko was probably one of the... Uh, yeah, actually, it's probably one of the cooler beams we've seen. Not that we've seen that many yet, but that, that Masinko was sick for sure. That's what I'm saying, bro. I, I just thought the form of the Masinko was cool, putting the two palms up to the head. Uh, now, I did think it was cool that Nappa's hand was like numb and you could see him shaking it. But damn, like I don't know. We could have we could have used a little bit of Gohan glazing here. We get a power level reading from Vegeta, but you could have been, been more. You were disappointed that Nappa was able to. I actually thought the setup here was we were going to get our first beam clash. You know? Oh no, no shot. They're wasting it on that. No uh, shot. Yeah, but I mean, just like a tiny, just like a tiny one. But yeah, I, you were a bit upset that he was able to just like boop. Just because <laughs> Vegeta's Vegeta's never been wrong before, man. When he said dodge the. Uh, Dodge the destructo disc. Nappa had to listen, and Vegeta was right. But when Vegeta was like, "Don't take this one easy, Nappa," he, uh, you know, Nappa did actually clutch up. He had it. So unfortunate. Go on, should have blown him away. But you know, I, I ain't complaining too much. So the Masinko did zap him though of his like key, basically. Um, Go on. Yeah. Yeah, he was cooked. So. <laughs> unfortunately that was a that was a key moment for him you know um yeah and then he fell, fell to the ground dead and then pretty much he was about to get his head crushed in and then boom finally dotto finally he snatched out he's saved by the main character himself goku he's here man It'll that's look. that's fall he was saved by by nimbus oh but yeah yeah i'll think oh, yeah i mean brother, bro, dotto, yeah, yeah. dotto was, Pushed up the glasses on me. He's like, no, yeah. um, it was actually it was um, it was Nimbus that saved Gohan. But um, okay, uh, yeah, no, Goku's finally here, and this is where we uh, honestly the episode slows down to a bit of a grind. Here, we're just uh, it is it's pretty much it just slows down after that. Yeah, it does. It's just, it's just Goku walking around being cool. We get some good dodging though. Like we do get some good fight scenes. It doesn't fall apart or anything. But this is when they start bringing in you know Baba for instance to like they. This is this is how they do it, by the way. They bring the characters back because even though there's no TV, Baba's magic crystal ball can see the field. So, would you? You know that that sucks. You, that sucks. you called this out in the reaction again. Patreon.com/slash key moments. Let's just join us in memory and watch it. But uh, you you call this out in the reaction, and you're like, I would just rather listen to Vegeta monologue for six yeah. minutes than to come back to them. Yeah. Because I know they wanted to add it for time, bro. But we can do literally anything for time. Like, why do we, why does it have to be the the nobodies? You know? <laughs> wow. I'm just hey, that, man. I'm just saying. Dotto, that is one of those one of those group of five or six characters is somebody's favorite character that you just called a nobody, man. Hey, well, in this particular instance, they are a nobody, as, bro. As, so, as uh, a human, uh, what are, what are you? A human? What what is the word I'm looking for here? Stan, a fan? Yeah, yes. Fanatic? That's a lot of humans over there that you're just shitting on, bro. Hey, bro. Time and place, it, is that what it is? Like, not not only is it a time and place, if they ain't got a goddamn gi on, bro, if they ain't exchanging fists, get them off the screen, bro. One of them's Roshi. Uh, I, I need all that. Yeah, well, get them off the screen, bro. He's retired. He's he, Damn. He, he's in Dragon Ball, bro. I'll see him in the Tournament of Power in 40 years from now, but. Damn. For now, spoilers. get him off my screen. Spoilers, bro. Holy hey, hell. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Is it 40 years? It's probably more like 25, right? It's not 40, is it? It's probably a lot calmer than 40. Like it, it might, It's probably even calmer than 25. 25 seems like a long time. It's probably like... Because Go, Goku and Vegeta are like 50 right now in, in current era Dragon Ball, right? Yeah, I, I'm trying to gauge it by, by Gohan. So Gohan would probably be like, what? 30. Maybe 20? 30? In is, Super? Is that real? In Super? Yeah, he's like 30. Oh, no shot. They're 25? 
But Goten's still like seven, right? Oh, no. I guess that's just because they visually look like kids. Yeah, right. right. The lore says until they hit like, what, 15 or something, they're supposed to look like uh, toddlers. Bro, fuck. If I talk about Goten and Trunks is going to get me angry. So let's not. Yeah, let's not. Yeah. <laughs> God fucking damn it. But yeah, I guess. So yeah, it, it might be. All right. All right. Uh, any, anywho. So this is, this is of course, now that he's here, this is when he's told about everyone basically being dead and then mocks, <laughs> mocks Chiaotu, which did you laugh at that part, by the way? You're, you're like, oh! you're like a Chiaotu hater, aren't you? Bro, I was mostly laughing because it was just funny that. Because Goku's like taking the time to look. He's like Piccolo, and then it cuts over to Tien. Tien cuts over to Yam Yamcha, and then he just—I imagine him just looking around. And Nappa's like, "If you're looking for the little one, he blew up." Like that shit is just funny. Oh, I do want to go back because we talked about dub lines that go hard. I don't know if this is in Kai, but when Nappa was gonna crush Gohan, he said, "There'll always be a soft spot for you on under my boots." I was like, "Damn, that kind of is a crazy yeah, line." Yeah, that that was, that was a that was a good line. That's probably not that's in Kai. crazy. It, Probably again, not. OG dub, bro. It's just, no. There will always be a soft spot for you underneath my boot. <laughs> we need someone to fact check that. We need, we need someone to fact check that. Tell us. There, I mean, we know that there's definitely lines that the Saiyans have said that cannot be in Kai. No shot. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, they, they've said some insane stuff. They definitely have, for sure. Uh, but I mean, after that, we're in the we're in the final stretch. It's basically just Gohan talking to everybody. And now some sensu beans and the whatnot. We covered it all in your recap. Yeah, yeah. And then so then after that we do get the so the I did I didn't know this because this is such like an iconic moment. But the nine thousand line is just a dub thing. It's actually eight thousand. Um, yeah. And so we do. He of course destroys the scouter. One of my favorite moments. I love I love that scene, dude. I have a fi- it goes. It's it's sick. I have a figure art where he can do that. And it's just like it's so cool honestly the scouter is just like not only is it like a really cool device but it's used as such like a good narrative thing for vegeta not to get too like in-depth dragon ball fan but vegeta crushing a scouter and then from here on like in the namek stuff i always as a kid i loved that vegeta was like nah you can't trust them shits bro that shit got me cooked i wouldn't trust it if i like that's a huge part of the namek arc I, he's like uh, other people using the scouters he's like that's gonna get you smoked oh yeah because zarbot and Dodoria still use scouters huh yeah, and he's like, I wouldn't trust that thing if I were you. And he's like, because, bro, it, it, that shit sucks. Man, I against, do love against the, the Earthlings though. technique. They, they are cool. Damn, they are so. The scouters are like, I don't know, peak. That's actual peak fiction. That's the greatest idea of all time. Yes, I, I, I really do actually like the the scouters, even though they're not they're not used again after, like, Namek. But yeah, Namek pretty much they're cooked. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess power levels are still in play because the androids can see power levels, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you're right. They they kind of they do that for a little bit. Yeah, but then that's but then after that, it's basically. I don't. Do we really even talk about power levels after that again? No, they kind of they don't they don't really want to talk. Only in like I guess like vague meanings. Like he's strong. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. But speaking of power level differences, Goku and Nappa fighting. I mean, we get to see Goku just embarrass Ooh, this guy. That was a pretty sick line because uh, Nappa's like, why do I keep wanting to say Vegeta? I think just because I'm just, yeah. But Nappa's like, I'm the second strongest Saiyan. <laughs> this was another, this I, I, I this would be a moment I'd be interested in seeing if it's there in Japanese. Because I I'd wonder if Goku actually said this. Because he's like, uh, go on, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. He basically, he tells him. He tells him, no, you're not. <laughs> He's like, well, well, if your friend over there is stronger than you, I guess that makes you third. <laughs> that shit goes crazy. Man. Damn. That, that was, I love the insults. Yes, that was so good. That was so good. You're, but you're like, well, there's only, I think you said there's only three of you anyway or, or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was, he was like, I'm the second strongest Saiyan. I was like, until you guys met Goku, you were the second Saiyan. So I don't think that really matters for much. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, Goku, uh, Goku rarely gets to disrespect people, but this was, I mean, when he does, it's always my favorite moments of the show, uh, standing on Nappa's head to get him to open up. That's different. Yeah, that's crazy. He stands on his bald head. Nappa goes to get him off and then boom, a shot to the stomach. And then he says, this is for my four friends. That's crazy. Do you think, do you think there's going to be enough, uh, level of detail and, and mechanics in sparking zero that I can stand on someone's head as Goku? Actually, no shot. Not gonna happen. Wouldn't that be so sick, though? If you although could? how they've never given him that move, like the like a counter state move, where if like maybe you go into it and then if they swing at you, you stand on their head. Damn, that is that underutilized. 
It is a little underutilized. I feel like that's something he could do. We also we also talked about in the reaction. I actually asked you. I wasn't sure if we got to see. So the aura that he gives off here. I feel like we don't really see that pretty much ever again because obviously they have replacements for that because we've got KO Ken, as the dove says back then. Uh, but we have Kyle Ken and we have, of course, Super Saiyan stuff past this. But the the aura that we got in this episode specifically for Goku to just sort of show like the, his sheer strength was really cool. I actually really, really liked that. Matter of fact, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but like the art in this episode was was really good. I really it was really this was a really Saiyan saga episode. Yeah, this was a very aesthetically pleasing ass episode of Dragon Ball the, Z. The, Sa the Saiyan saga chin was in full effect. Hang on, though. You, you're saying that, but are you saying that as like a I, I like it. Are you saying that as a I, no, no, I, I like it, too. That's okay. I, I really okay. like it. I, that's that's why I always notice it, because I, I always I, every time this is my train of thought. I'm like, damn, that's a good ass shot. And I was like, oh, it's because his chin looks like that. I don't know why <laughs> my brain sees Saiyan saga chin. I'm like, damn, that's Dragon Ball Z right there. I, I don't I'm, even know about this. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very with you. I, I really like that. And so then after he jumps on his head, it's just a, basically, I mean, there was no, actually, after the jump on the head, because he he, he kind of toys with him a little bit, jumps on his head, hops off, and then hits him with the, the Broly punch to the stomach. Uh, yeah, he and he's he's done in. He's cooked. Yeah, pretty then much. The, then that that is the episode. So next episode should be the end of Nappa. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's gone. Although when I no told way you Naf is not dying. So the next episode we'll be covering here on the podcast, when we get back to the Z rewatch will be lesson number one. And I told you that, and you're like, that sounds like a filler ass episode. <laughs> it, it does sound like a filler ass title, but we talked through it. I, I feel like it's just going to be, cause remember we talked about this in King Kai. They skip going over the Kyle Ken. They leave that as a like tease so that they're probably going to do a little flashback. Yeah. You can explain it. Yeah. You're probably right. You you're probably like spot on. Dotto, hit us with the uh hit us with the differences. That was that was the general I, of Goku's arrival. I, so. I, I literally know the difference. I'm gonna say it and then uh just okay. know, it's gonna be different. But uh, I'm going to bet that it's something about how Baba's showing up over there never fucking happens. I'm gonna <laughs> shock me. Come on, Wiki, go ahead, shock me. Let's see. Scroll down, <laughs> scroll down. Differences from the manga. Fortune teller Baba arriving at Kame House and uses her crystal ball so the others can view the battle is exclusive to the anime. Wow, shocking, shocking that, shocking that the original manga run didn't give us uh, the same information we knew all over again with seven different characters. Was that, was that, that it? Not though? care about. Was that, that it? is it? That's the that's the only one. Oh, it, again, it was mostly like cool filler. Like it was mostly like Goku walking up, cuts to other people. Like they they. They were they were taking their time, but again, it was all filler that I, I like. Going with the other people, that one that one's a little different. Do you want to get into some trivia? I, I I I scroll down and I'm actually reading it, and I do think maybe I'm a little maybe I am a little right. What's look, that? Look at this. So again, shout out to the wiki. Christopher Sabbath's way of saying the nine thousand line, it's over nine thousand, was not as well received as the original line by Brian Drummond and the original Ocean slash West oh, Westwood you're right. dub. Fans felt that Drummond put the the adequate anger and emotion to the line while Sabbath changed it to a quick, it's over 9,000. And then in Kai, <laughs> uh, TV broadcast version, Sabbath redubbed the line to sound more like Drummond's original delivery. In the uncut DVD version, he actually says it's over 8,000, accurately reflecting the original line. Because again, the it's over 9,000 is technically from Japan. Supposedly You're right. 8, I, I guess the original 9,000 is from the ocean dub where, where I always thought they just turned it up, but I guess, yeah, no, it's, Cause he does, I he does in the YouTube. It's over nine thousand, <laughs> and then Nap. Honestly, Napa's delivery was always my favorite part of that. Cause he actually sounds scared. Yeah. The the what? Yeah. He, Cause he did not say what nine thousand. He he didn't say that here, and so yeah. that that kind of makes me. That kind of makes me a little sad. Uh, wait, this is an interesting one. Goku's hit on Napa's stomach is dedicated to Chiaotsu in the Japanese anime and the manga. But the English versions have him dedicate the hit for all four of the Fallen Z fighters. Mm -hmm. He cared about Chiaotu like that? I guess so, yeah. He, he was like, all right, let me get one more. Man, we didn't, you know what? We didn't really, <laughs> you know, it just, it just kind of, it just kind of is what it is. Anything else stick out to you there? I don't know. That probably is the most interesting one that in original Japanese, it was just Chiaotu. <laughs> that, that pissed me off. I ain't even going to lie. I was Yamcha up there. I was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Chiaotu? Chiaotu gets that one dedicated? Unless he followed it up with an ass-beating 
like for each one of them oh, individually, yeah. then that would have been that would have been even sicker. Yeah. That would have been sick. Piccolo. Yeah, like if if he had a little combo piece and gave one for each of them, then yeah, okay, that would be cool. Uh, but. Yeah, that that be, that'd be kind of sick. Uh, this one's this one's interesting. Vegeta, not no no not not that one. This episode marks the first time that this specifically Piccolo Piccolo Junior dies in the series. It's also the first and only time Kami dies in this episode. Is Piccolo and Kami are the same being? Uh, yeah, that's, Dude. that's it. After this. No, all safe. One, one more, one more, because I swear oh, you on got one more? they're always on their ass about these numbers because the dub just be like, <laughs> just too loose with it. But Vegeta reads Gohan's overall power level whilst charging his Masinko as 3,000 in the English versions, but the Japanese version has him say Gohan is at 2,800. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just, they were just rounding up. Huh? <laughs> Come on now, we could lay off, you know, we could, we could go a little easy on them here. They're Man. just rounding up a little bit. It's crazy. All right, Dotto. If you guys are new to our series here, we do always give a rating to mm, each mm. of the episodes. And uh that oh it's 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 about that time. It is, is a, am I go am I am I am I going uh, or am I putting my fingers up? Do you do you want to go first? You want to here let me, I, I could go first. I can go first. I don't have too the much rating. Time. So we gave Nimbus Speed each a nine so episode 27 of wow. z we considered a nine and then they go back Damn. just one more we gave napa's rampage which was the filler we've been looking forward to which is him just destroying shit you gave it an eight and i gave it a seven so now that we're okay. on episode 28 of goku's arrival i i feel confident of where i want to where i want to stand so you I, can i'm, go I'm so very I'm confident up. i'm very confident where i'm at this is the most seven episode i've ever seen in my life like this is okay this this has to be a seven for me you know the filler then the overall pacing it does drag it down a little bit although we do get talking about it again we do get some good stuff in here i just feel like the pacing itself and uh it, it's obvious like this is the prelude to a crazy ass beating but we're not there yet so i'm going hard seven what, what are we thinking from your end now i just want to remind you guys as before i say mine dotto is the individual that gave episode 10 a new friend. all right bro are we gonna bring this up a, a every <laughs> episode bro it was yeah i don't know I, bro it was funny bro that episode was funny yeah. i didn't uh yeah, i'm no. go back and change it if i could uh i gave it an eight wow okay yeah, I even an eight. I, I again, I know if you watch our reaction, like I, we were being a little harsh on some of the the filler, which is so funny. Then to come into this podcast and like defend the dub as hard as we did there, but uh, even with all that, it's still, I don't know. It just had it was the iconic line that we've all said multiple times in our lifetime, and Goku's finally here, and a lot of the shots were really good. And we also got the Masinko, which I won't lie. I didn't think it was going to hit as much for me as it did, but that was pretty sick. Although I should know that if a beam mm -hmm. is happening, my ass is going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, the beam, the beams are always going to be done right. They're always going to be done right. The beams are sick. So, you know what, though? I'm happy because we didn't agree. And there's been too many of these that are the same damn number. And so for once, again, we're back. Not the same number. This is when Donald hits me with the, you know what? It's an eight. No, I, 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 I'm Guys. very, I'm actually very steadfast on the seven here. I, I'm feeling good. It's insane. The main character arrives, does a bunch of shit, and like you're saying seven when <laughs> you, you gave, you Bro. gave the filler ass episode Nap, Napa's rampage an eight. And this Bro, is a that, that was he was going off, bro. He was going oh, off. I and, you swear. Know, not, it's just it's not it's not ready not yet. Out, it's not ready dude. yet. It's not ready yet. Oh no! I hear the music. Oh no, I hear the music. The podcast is ending. I hope you guys left a like. If you're a, if you're a podcast, just only listener on, on audio, you can check us out on YouTube and vice versa. If you see the audio version, it's on podcast services. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see y'all next week.